So here is another example for momentum methods. This will be both linear and angular momentum. And we're doing this for rigid bodies. So a three-dimensional body where different pieces of it have different velocities and accelerations. Over here, we're dealing with it, velocities that change with time. And these guys are vectors. So we'll be looking at everything in the x direction and the y direction and rotation, which is happening around an axis kind of sticking out of the board, so the k direction. Here we go. Uniform sphere of mass m and radius r is projected along a rough horizontal surface with a linear velocity v1. So here we go. We're traveling in the x direction. No angular velocity. So it starts out, it is not rotating it. It's just going straight forward. They give us the coefficient of kinetic friction will be represented by UK. Determine the time at which the sphere will start rolling without sliding and the linear and angular velocities of the sphere at that time. So time is in the problem statement. We know we're going to be using some linear and angular momentum. And as this progresses, so kind of visualize in your mind what is happening here. So initially, the whole thing is going straight forward. But what's going to happen when it hits the ground? Well, friction is going to start pushing it back. And eventually, this thing will start rotating and rotating faster and faster until it's not sliding anymore. The angular velocity will meet the linear velocity. So here we go. We're dealing with time. So that means we have the linear and angular momentum balance equations that we're looking at. And to relate these velocities to one another, so v and omega are not related when it's sliding. But when it's not sliding, then v is going to equal to r omega. So that's a little bit of kinematics to throw in there, too. For our inertia, we can look that up in a table. Be real careful. So this looks like a sphere too, hollow versus solid. Make sure you're grabbing the right kind of sphere on the tables. Start out by drawing your momentum diagram. So where do we start? We start with just a forward velocity, no rotation. So I omega is zero. And then we have forces and moments changing that. So we need to make a good free body diagram here showing all the forces. And at the very end, the thing is going to be going forward, mv2. This is a new velocity. And it's also rotating. So we have rotational and translational motion at the very end of this. OK, in the y direction. We'll start with the y direction because that is a little bit simpler, less going on. There's no vy. We have a 0 here at the very end. There's no velocity in the y direction, 0 here. So this turns into just a force balance equation, right? So it just tells us that the normal force is equal to the weight. And we're going to need that normal force for our friction. For the x direction, a little bit more going on here. So we have our initial mvx coming in here. And what forces are going on in the x direction? So that is going to be our friction force. So we have our kinetic friction. Until the very end, it's going to be kinetic. Right when they start going at the same speed, then it's static. But for the majority of the problem, it's kinetic. So UK times our normal force, which we saw as mg times t. So that's our force times time. And it gets us to our new linear momentum, nv2. Now there's a mass in each term here. So we can go ahead and cancel all those masses out of here. And we are left with, does this look familiar to you? This should be a little bit familiar. We have v equals v naught plus at. This is like a constant acceleration problem, right? We have our acceleration here, a time. So kind of interesting that our linear momentum equation turned into a constant acceleration equation, v equals v naught plus at. Kind of interesting. OK, the very last balance that we're going to be doing is our angular momentum and moments. So starting out, we are not rotating. Our i omega is 0. The moments, let's go ahead and take the moment around the center of gravity. So we're going to go from the center of gravity to whatever force is perpendicular. So that's going to be our friction force here. So here's our RF. And which direction is this going to rotate it in? Right. So this is going to end up being a negative moment. It's going in the clockwise direction here. 
and it will create a negative rotation. So remember clockwise is negative. Use that right hand rule. So here's our force, is our friction force. That's the perpendicular piece of creating that moment here. And for our inertia, we looked our inertia up in the tables. That was 2 fifths m r squared. Let's go ahead and rearrange a few things. We can get rid of masses here again. OK, so omega as a function of time. So we just took that 2 fifths over to the other side, rearranged this equation a bit. What should we do next? So we have something with velocity, something with omega, something with we need to time out of this thing. Let's go ahead and throw that kinematics equation in there. So remember, at the very end, when this thing is not sliding anymore, then the linear velocity and the angular velocity will be related to each other. V equals R omega. We can take this relationship and start substituting some things in. So in our constant acceleration equation, V2 is equal to R omega 2. So V1 minus our friction force times T is equal to V2, which is R omega. And what is our omega? Well, we found that down here, right? So we're going to plug in our omega. Looks like we have some radiuses that cancel out. So let's group everything that has time in it. And at the very end, we can get the time it takes for it to not slide as a function of that starting velocity and our friction coefficient in gravity. So interesting, interesting. Just to recap, our linear momentum in the y direction turned into a force balance equation. And our linear momentum in the x direction turned into a constant acceleration equation, v equals v naught plus at. We also threw in some kinematics to relate the linear velocity and angular velocity to one another. So this it started out as just a linear momentum equation, but it, it kind of brought in elements from, from other pieces that we've been using. So that's kind of, a, of an interesting thing. And um, you can rearrange this around, relate the um, starting velocity and the ending velocity, the angular velocity and the linear velocity. And we have the time it takes for it to stop sliding. So a little bit more involved in this, but we had those three equations, three unknowns. And hopefully this felt a little bit like statics. So statics, we looked at like all the forces in the x direction, all the forces in the y direction, and then we added the moments up. And this is going to feel kind of similar to that, but you should see some other interesting things falling out of it too.